Praise the Lord. You may take your seats. The Lord is gracious and kind. He's so wonderful. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I would like first of all to take this opportunity to thank uh, our pastors for giving me this opportunity to stand before you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The beautiful lady you're seeing beside me is none other than my wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. She's the best description of beauty. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Wow. Okay. Genesis chapter 29, verse 1 to 3. So it's Bible study. You need to have your notebook, Bible, and pen. Genesis 29, verses 1 to 3. And Genesis 29, verses 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. Are we all there? Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the and he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well, they watered the flocks. And a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered. Meaning the flocks could not get water because there was a great stone that had covered the well. And they rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Meaning Jacob was not alone. And for them to roll the stone away, it means the stone was very heavy. So they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place or where it belonged. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Computer man. Thank you. Thank you. Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Do you have amplified? Amplified says, keep and guard your heart with all vigilance. And above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. So the reason you are guarding your heart is because what is coming out of there is very important. Amplified calls it the springs of life. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anything that 
emanates or gives life is very important. So God is saying inside your heart there is what is called springs of life. That's why you're guarding it with all diligence. Because if you don't guard your heart then the springs of life will be defiled. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How many knew that inside them there is what is called springs of life? King James calls it the issues of life. But the Amplified says the springs of life. That is why when you encounter a born again person who is serious, when you engage with them, out of them flow springs of life. That's why a non-believer can get born again when they encounter somebody who is genuinely born again. Because from within your heart, you bring out springs of life. That's why a sick person, when they encounter a genuinely born again person, they can be healed. Because when you begin ministry, you release springs of life. Inside you. That's why God will tell you with all diligence. Guard your heart. Because what is inside is very valuable. Why else would you guard your heart? If what is coming out is not important. So there is a treasure inside there. And the Bible calls it the springs of life. It is what when a born again person goes to their family, he can bring revival in the whole family. Because when that spring is allowed room to navigate the family. It brings healing and change. So Jacob reaches to a, a well with his, uh, with his, I think with his, with his, with his servants. In Genesis chapter 29. Then they find the flock which are just stayed by the well. Nobody was watering them. And the Bible says that on the mouth of the well, there was a great stone. Why did they put a great stone? It's because from inside the well, there was springs of life. There was water. In those days, those were desert days. No water. So they depended on wells. So they could water their animals. They could do some agriculture. And also for their livelihood. Praise the Lord. The well was very important in those days. That's why they had to take a lot of effort to guard the well. The Bible says a great stone had covered the well. In those days also, when your enemies were coming to attack, one of the things they would do was to defile the well. Pollute the well. Praise the Lord. Because they know once they pollute the well, then you can't, you can't depend on it. So they had to take a lot of effort to guard the well. Because out of that well, those 
pure waters was what was called the springs of life. And God is saying, you need to guard your heart. Because what you're carrying on the inside can bring a change in your family, can bring change at your workplace. What you're carrying on the inside can bring healing. What you're carrying on the inside can bring revival. What you're carrying on the inside can change your neighborhood. It is called the rivers of living water. The springs of life. Guard your heart. God desires a pure heart. You cannot bring change if your heart is not pure. You cannot bring change if your heart is defiled. You need to guard your heart from anything that can bring defilement. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I labor to show you that you carry something valuable in your heart. So that you can, with vigilance, as Amplified says, you can guard your heart. You know, vigilance is a word used for fighting. Meaning you will fight anything that will come to defile your heart. You will fight anything that will cause your heart to not to be pure. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, at times we don't know what we carry, so when sin comes, we just, we just go with it as though we were waiting for it. Carry me. The Bible says we have this treasure in jars of clay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I had a friend uh, who led me to Christ in the year 2005. He, his name was called Francis Gatimu. He's a Kenyan. He got married to an American. Now they are doing missionary work in Mexico. In Francis' family, he's the first one who got born again. He's the last born. And there were a family of around six. Single mother. But when Francis got born again, in a period of two years, the brothers and sisters also got born again. The mother got born again. Life had come into the family. It did not only change them spiritually, it also changed them financially. Why? Right. Because when he got born again and received the rivers of living water, the springs of life, it changed his whole family. Praise the Lord. That's why God will say, guard your heart. I want us to look at the benefits of having a pure heart. So that you can guard your heart very well. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know when you are told, okay, uh, we have employed you to guard this place because inside there is a gold and diamond. And there is a lot of money. And they have employed you as a watchman to guard the place. And then they just go without giving you any weapon. Even a stick they don't give you. Will you do the job? You'll say, ah, I need some weaponry. 
Because you know what is there is valuable. For you to guard it very well, you need to be armed very well. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's the same way with what we carry on the inside. If you don't know the value of the Holy Spirit, then you will not guard your heart. So let's look at the benefits of having a pure heart. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. 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 Please give me King James Version. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. It says, Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, King James. He said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Already there is a, there is a blessing of being pure pure in heart. And what is the blessing? Seeing God. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's how I read my Bible. I don't try to look for revelation. The revelation is already there. That blessed are the pure in heart. Thank you, Jesus. What is the blessing? For they shall see God. Benefit number one. When you have a pure heart, you see God. Meaning if your heart is defiled, you can't see God. That's why they say, Katunda liwano, katunda liwano, but you're out. God is here, God is here. You can't see him because your heart is defiled. A defiled heart is a blind heart. When God is moving, when your heart is defiled, you'll only hear about it. You will not be a partaker of it. You can't see God when your heart is defiled. Impossible. Neda mama, neda sebo. Neda sebo. Mukama eba ziwe. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. You want a heart which sees. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 17. Paul is praying for the church at Ephesus. In the amplified version he says. I pray for the eyes of your heart. To be flooded with light. Do you have amplified Ephesians 1.17? I pray for the eyes of your heart to be flooded with light. Okay, give me 18, sorry, 18. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18, amplified. By having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. So that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you. Cause you are blind. Praise the Lord. I want to see God. I don't know about you. I want to see God. I want to know when God is moving. When God has stopped. When God is moving quickly. I want to be like the Issachars. They knew the times and seasons. But I can guarantee you. That they were of a pure heart. 
You cannot know God's timings and seasons when your heart is defiled. You are cut short from the frequency of heaven. That's why Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart and the blessing is seeing God. Seeing God. Seeing God. Seeing God. In your family. Seeing God. At your workplace. Seeing God. In our city. In Kawempe. Seeing God. The blessing is when your heart is pure. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's why you need to guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. I fight every day to guard my heart. Okay, let me just be open with you. I'm married to this beautiful lady. But at times, in the house, offense can be there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not blaming her. And I'm not blaming myself. I'm just saying, at times, friction can be in the house. It's a sign of a healthy relationship anyway. Because the person you are almost about to step on their toes is the person who's close to you. If I am here, I cannot step on my wife's toes. But because she is close to me, because she is close to me, I can easily step on her. So it's the people who you are closest to, who at times you can easily get offended with. But I do my best as a husband not to be offended. But even when I'm offended, I make sure I make things right. That is how by the grace of God we are doing it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You guard your heart. From bitterness, from jealousy, hatred, unforgiveness, sexual immorality, the love of material things. It is a daily thing. Remember what Pastor taught us here about the flesh? Have you forgotten? I discipline my body. I put it under subjection. It's the same way you need to guard your heart. Because if you don't guard your heart, your heart will be defiled. Your well will be defiled. You need to roll a big stone. A big stone of fasting. A big stone of prayer. A big stone of Bible study asking the Lord to forgive you, asking the Lord to uproot jealousy, to uproot envy, to uproot gluttony, to uproot stealing, to uproot gossip. That is rolling the big stone to guard your heart. It takes effort. That's why the Bible says with all diligence. Because God knew it takes effort. The devil is after the springs of life that God has put in you. Guard your heart with all diligence. Because when your heart is defiled, you cannot see God. Number two, benefits of a pure heart. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 King James Timoseo echokubiri Abiri abiri 
2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 Let me stick to English 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Meaning, Paul was telling Timothy that there are those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. He was telling him in short, you cannot call on the Lord if you're engaging in youthful lusts. Praise the Lord. That's why he said, flee also youthful lust. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Benefit number two. A pure heart is the basis of which you call or by which you call on the name of the Lord. If you have set yourself to seek the Lord, the genesis of your successful seeking is a pure heart. You cannot call on the Lord if your heart is defiled. With them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. It is the basis of seeking God. When you set yourself to seek the Lord. Where you start. Is from a pure heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you want to be successful in seeking the Lord or calling on the Lord, the basis is a pure heart. They that call on him out of a pure heart. Psalms chapter 24. Psalms 24. Let's get it also from the Old Testament so that we establish it. Psalms 24 from verse 1. We are going to read up to verse 3. Up to verse 6. Psalms 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Thank you. The world and they that dwell therein. Verse 2. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Verse 3. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? Verse 4. He that has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully. Verse 5. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord. I told you a pure heart, there is a blessing. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now here they are saying, he that has clean hands, pure heart, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord. And righteousness from the God of his salvation. Watch this now. This is the generation of them that seek him. That seek thy face, O Jacob. Selah. Meaning pause and think about it. Pause and think about what? If you are to be a generation that seeks him, 
A generation that seeks his face. A generation that calls on his name. Clean hands, pure heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we normally say, uh, uh, in Rwanda, we say, Echo oba eno, mirembe ya fe. Ochitegera. Ochitegera. Mirembe gwa fe. Edembe ya fe. Okay, let me stick to English. We say this is our generation. We are the ones. But David is saying that this is the generation that seeks him, that seeks his face. Which one? Clean hands, pure heart. They that call on the name of the Lord out of a pure heart. If we are to be a generation that seeks him, clean hands, pure heart has to be part of us. It is possible. Praise the Lord. It takes a lot of diligence. 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 Amen. A lot of effort to guard your heart. I want to be a generation that seeks him. I want to be among that generation. This is the generation of them that seek him. Wonderful generation. The generation that ascends into his holy hill. The generation that stands in his holy place. The generation that has authority to tell gates to lift up their heads is the generation with a pure heart. Don't just go to gates and say, lift up your head. And your heart is defiled. They will slap you silly. Have you read Psalms 24, the whole of it? It's one of my scriptures this year. Before you get authority, before you get audacity to introduce the king of glory to ancient gates, you need to have ascended the hill. You need to have stood before his holy place. You need to have got Gotten the blessing. Gotten power. Then you come and say, lift up your heads, O ye gates. And watch if gates will not open. But the key, if you want to be that generation that seeks his face, that call on the name of the Lord, Pure heart is where we start from. So that's benefit number two. Number one, you see God. Number two, you are able to call on him. You become qualified to seek his face. Praise the Lord. Amen. The last one. It's still in the book of Psalms 24, verse 2. What are the benefits of a pure heart? Again, let's start from Psalms 24, from verse 1, okay? We are looking at the benefits of a pure heart. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that has clean hands and a 
pure heart. He says, who shall ascend into the hill? Or who shall stand? Everybody says, stand. I'm the teacher, you're the student. Damu Banange. Stand. Stand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Who shall stand? Not who shall visit. Who shall stand? Who shall stand? I did a research on the word stand. Because I like to play with words. The word stand in Greek. It means kum. K-O-O-M. 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 K-O-B-O-M. <laughs> it means to be set. Chitegeza. To be set. To be fixed. Oku. Okay, let me read all of them. You will get it. To be set. To be fixed. To be stationed. To be established. Chitegeza. To be established. To who shall be Nyezewa old in his holy place? Who shall stand? Who shall be fixed? Who shall make that place his home? Who shall be established there? Who shall be stationed in the presence of God? God, meaning God does not want you to visit. You are entering and getting out. Uh -uh. Stand. Be rooted there. Be fixed there. Be established there. Who? Pure heart. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. He says, he that has clean hands and a pure heart. That is the one who will stand. Is it possible to stand in his presence? Yes, it's very possible. The Bible says it so clearly that if you have clean hands and a pure heart then you are going to stand in his presence. Praise the Lord. You don't become a visitor. You become established there. A pure heart makes you fixed, stationed in his presence. When you are fixed in his presence, you have access to mysteries. Because he confides with you. Do you remember Angel Gabriel? He comes and tells Mary, I am the angel who stands in his presence. Do you know what that means? When Mary was in Bethlehem, in the ghetto, because the Bible says it was the least of the towns. She was not even royalty. She was not educated. She was not skilled. She was just there in Bethlehem. But the heavens chose her to carry baby Jesus. Gabriel was standing in the presence of God. And he heard God say, I want to look for a young virgin lady out of all the towns. Let's choose Bethlehem. And God zoomed into Bethlehem with a Google whatever Bethlehem. They said, out of Bethlehem, I want to get a lowly woman, a virgin. This is the description of her. 
She's the one who is qualified. At that time, Gabriel is hearing the conversation. Because he stands in the presence of God. So when he is coming to Mary, he is coming with what he has heard. He is coming with mysteries. Things which will dumbfound Mary's mind. And when Mary tried to doubt, she said, Mary, I am the one who stands in his presence. I hear the 411 of heaven. And it is what I'm bringing for you. It is good news. When you stand before his presence, he gives you 411. My daughter, this is what I'm about to do. It's between you and me. Shh. But you have to have a pure heart. Are you seeing why you need to guard your heart? I want to stand in his presence. I don't want to be a visitor. Even in the natural sense, when a visitor is coming every time, you get tired of the visitor. Uh, uh, yeah. so, uh, I'm not sending a signal, I'm just saying. <laughs> if you are visiting me every day, I'll, I'll tell my wife, hey, Mrs. Visitor is so visiting. Can they take a one month holiday, then they come? Every time they are the door. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> God doesn't want you to be a visitor. He wants you to stand. That's your position. Stand. Be fixed. Be established. In his presence. What is the secret? Pure heart. Pure heart. Pure heart. You know, we can just see you here as ordinary. But in heaven, you're standing in his presence. Dangerous person. You don't want to mess with such a person. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is the one who comes back with authority. To tell the gates, lift up your heads. And they don't shout about it. Authority is not in shouting. They may be so lonely and quiet. They may be very thin. Knees knocking each other. But when they open their mouth, the power that comes from there, it comes from standing in the presence of God. Pure heart. You step on him, says, sorry, it's okay. They are the ones who tell you sorry. In my quest for a pure heart, and I am still believing God. There's a time we went for Monday altar prayers at Tobani. Dressed up very well. Roll on, rolled everywhere. Smelling very nice. I'm going to praise God. We get to the balcony. Not balcony. To the, to the basement parking. And then uh, Pastor Taka presses. You know there's a button. He presses on the door. And, and it opened. I was very clean. I wanted to walk on air. Left the car like this. Only to find a cleaner who never saw me and splashed water, dirty water on me. Praise the Lord. The cleaner was terrified. He said, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I said, it's okay. It's okay. No problem. As I was going, I said, God, is this me? Before then, hmm. 
I would have fired him terribly. <laughs> but God somehow has dealt with me to some degree. Sincerely, the first thing which came was, it's okay. It's okay, brother. If the man was not born again, he would have said, I want to get born again. Praise the Lord. I'm not talking about big things. I'm just saying having a pure heart. Able to forgive. Not easily offended. Always full of joy. Praise the Lord. Always full of joy. I don't like to be sad. I'm the most joyful person in the house. There's no money for sugar. Well, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no money for charcoal. I'm not moved. In fact, I never want to, her to know how I get the money. She just receives the money. Because she can come and say, hey, kakati, budget, hey, hey, Praise the Lord. Amen. But just joy. By the grace of God, I've learned to be content. The days in the ghetto, I could take water and a biscuit. The more you murmur, the more you complain, the more God adds the water. Until I discovered complaining will not bring fish and chips. God knew that I had graduated when one day I took water and biscuit and I said, God, I thank you. Thank you very much that I could even drink water and eat biscuit. Thank you very much. That's when one day, if I've shared with you my testimony, I got some money in the toilet and I bought two chapatis and beans. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God wants us to have pure hearts. Pure hearts. Pure hearts. Pure hearts. Some of us, it's hard to forgive. It's very hard. Even you, you pray and tell God, Oh, Mukama. Oh, God. One of the things I could struggle with was anger. You talk about family iniquity. In the Makligeo line. Well, now me, I'm in Jesus' line. Praise the Lord. Amen. But in that line, when they are angry, you know because the body begins to vibrate like mobile phone. When, when you see, like, you need to take off. When you see their hands, praise the Lord. There is one time I was admin sitting there. And somebody had, had given, had, my car was spoiled, so I got some money, 2.5 million, to buy a, a, a not a new, a Japan used engine. So I sent this mechanic the money. And I don't know what he did with the money. He never bought the engine. He just did a welding on the parts. <laughs> when I discovered, I took, I, I was calm. I gave him a call. I told him what happened. Then he began to abuse me. You pastors don't have money. You're always complaining. And you have eaten my 2.5. From there, there, there. I said, I will finish you. 
And the man said, I'm the one coming for you. I said, today the church is going to see warfare. I was ready. Temperatures had, had risen. I was boiling. Praise the Lord. In the midst of the boiling, the Holy Spirit asked me, are you really born again? Are you a child of love? Then, this is how I, I learned how to say who I am. I began to say, I love with the love of God. I began to declare the scriptures. I'm not called to hate. I'm called to love. The Holy Spirit has shed abroad his love in my heart. Therefore, I love unconditionally. As I was declaring those scriptures, temperatures were reducing. Praise the Lord. Then I called him. I said, my brother, you have hurt me. But it is well. After one week, he calls me. I say, pastor, did you curse me? Please remove the curse. I said, no, I did not curse you. And genuinely, I did not curse. I just said, it is well. It is a journey, beloved. But you have to apply effort. You have to put diligence. The Lord is coming for a pure heart. It's not easy. But it's possible. It's a daily walk. Ask the Lord to help you. Praise the Lord. You know those areas. I don't know why I'm lingering on this, but some of us is anger. You are born again. Anointed. Angry woman. Have, have you heard those credentials? Born again, anointed, angry woman. Amen, which amen? Amen, <laughs> Because amen means let it be so, right? <laughs> I don't want to be born again, anointed, angry man. God forbid. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Have you ever seen anointed men of God who are angry? They can fire you on the pulpit. Cast you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Is it that they are not anointed? Do you remember Moses? God has labored to give him the Ten Commandments. God has labored. You think it was easy for God? In those days, God could not just appear carelessly. So he tells Moses, come up hither. He took a sacrifice for God to come down. He gives you the Ten Commandments. Anger. Bah! Broke them. And it is because of that and something else, he struck the rock when he was told not to. Moses, you are my friend. I'm going to But we are not going to enter the promised land. No. You, you will see. Entering. Forget. Sahau. Anger. Obusongo. Forty years in the wilderness. On anger management, he did not pass. 
Okufuga obusungu akote yakaita. I think Moses was scattering those sheep like nobody's business. Ndoza Musa eh Yakuba ngendigezo ngatazisasira. Praise the Lord. Amen. Anger. Obusungu. So when God launches him into his destiny, kati katonda bwa muyingiza mu magenda ge Anger brought him down. He never entered. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you understanding? Our target should be a pure heart. Target ya fe ina kubera mutima mulongofu. How do you achieve that? Psalms 51 verses 10. Zaburi atano mwe mukumi. Psalms 51 verses 10. It is a prayer we are going to pray for five minutes and then we close. We can all stand as we read this scripture. How do you get a pure heart? Psalms chapter 51 verses 10. David prayed after prophet Nathan had told him of his sin. Amen. Amina. He said, create in me a clean heart. Oh God. Are you seeing that word, oh God? It means it was not just a prayer like, create in me a clean heart, oh God. It was a desperate cry. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God. Oh God. God. Create in me a clean heart. Oh God. Remember he was in sackcloth. He was fasting. When he prayed this prayer. It was a desperate cry. Create in me a clean heart. That word clean also means pure. Oh God, it's a desperate cry. And renew a right spirit within me. Meaning you can have a wrong spirit. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want you to go before the Lord and ask him to create in you a clean heart, a pure heart, and even every day in your walk with God. You need to ask him to create in you a clean heart. Pastor always tells us that every day he has to do confession and repentance. Every day, very important, create in me a clean heart. Maybe while you are sleeping, while you are asleep spiritually, the enemy came and planted seeds of immorality, seeds of anger, seeds of jealousy, seeds of bitterness, and then he covered and he went away while you were still sleeping. We don't want in your rising when you're being celebrated in that company then only 50,000 you receive a bribe of 50,000. You never knew you had an issue with money. From your days of humble beginnings, you never knew you had an issue with money. On the day of your rising, when you are a CEO, you are paid 10 million. Then a bribe of 50,000. You shake and you take. And it causes your destiny. The Bible says, when the wheat was growing, 
They discovered the tears were also growing. They asked who planted this. They said an enemy did this. One of the things about tears, they look exactly like wheat. You cannot know. You can't differentiate. It is only during harvest time that you know that, ah, this is not wheat. This is a tear. But as they are growing, you cannot know. Praise the Lord. That's why David pray, examine my heart. Search my heart. If there be anything, any seed planted inside there, oh, Father, expose. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. Begin to pray. Somebody lift your hands. In the next three minutes, just ask the Lord to create in you a clean heart. Maybe you're struggling with jealousy. Ask the Lord to uproot that planting of jealousy. The Bible says, every plant my father never planted, it shall be uprooted. Every planting of the devil in our hearts, every planting of gossip, every planting of slander, every planting of the love of money, every planting of iniquity, every planting of immorality, every planting of bitterness, every planting of unforgiveness as the Bible says my father will uproot begin to ask the Lord, uproot every planting that you did not plant in my life uproot every planting of the devil create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me create in me a clean heart may my heart be pure before you O God God. May my heart be pure before you, oh God. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Somebody pray. Make it a genuine prayer. Make it a genuine prayer. Pray from the bottom of your heart. Ask the Lord, create in me a clean heart. Oh God, create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. Heart. No one is perfect. No one is perfect. For all have sinned and fallen short. No one is perfect. If you say you have no sin, the Bible says you are lying and the truth is not in you. Therefore, ask the Lord whatever that is in your life that is not pleasing to Him, that will not qualify you to stand in His presence. Ask the Lord to uproot it. Ask the Lord to remove it. Ask the Lord to uproot it. Ask the Lord to remove it. Ask the Lord to uproot it. Creating me a clean heart. Creating me a clean heart. Creating me a clean heart. And renew. And renew. And renew. And renew. A right spirit within me. Maybe you had a wrong spirit as a result of sin. Maybe you had a wrong spirit. Maybe you had a wrong spirit. Ask the Lord. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. 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 Create in me, O God. Create in me, O God. A clean heart. A clean heart. A pure heart. For it is written, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, they shall see God, I want to see you, I want to see you, I want to see you, Heavenly Father, I want to see you, I want to see you, you promise in your word, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God, I want to see you, remove every kind of sin, every defilement of my heart that has brought blindness, that has brought blindness, that has brought blindness, 
blindness that has caused me not to see you, not to see you. Oh, Father, I want to see you. 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 I want to call on you out of a pure heart. I want to call on you. Do you want to be that generation? Do you want to be among that generation that seeks the face of the Lord? Do you want to be among that generation? The generation in Psalms chapter 24 verse 6 the generation that seeks the face of God the generation that gets the blessing from standing in the presence of God the generation that gets authority the generation that gets power to open the gates to command gates to be opened gates in families gates in localities gates in communities gates of the city gates of nations do you want to get that authority do you want to stand in the presence of God and get that authority to tell the gates lift up your heads all ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting door you need a pure heart 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 somebody plead the blood plead the blood plead the blood as we close plead the blood plead the blood I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. Wash me in the blood. 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 Create in me a clean heart, O God. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Some of you, some of you need to tell the Lord sorry. Some of you need to repent before God. Maybe you got angry. Maybe you watched some things which were not appropriate for your eyes. Maybe you said some words which were not appropriate. You need to go before the Lord. Somebody ask the Lord for mercy. Ask the Lord for mercy in this season when we are dealing with iniquities when we are dealing with iniquities you want men to see your good works you want men to see your light shining but iniquity is a hindrance iniquity is a hindrance ask the Lord for mercy ask the Lord for mercy somebody pray from the bottom of your heart ask the Lord for mercy ask the Lord for mercy oh my God God, my God, have mercy on us. Have mercy upon us. As Kawempe Worship Center, we want to be a church that stands in your presence. We want to be a church that seeks your face. We want to be a church that calls on you out of a pure heart. We want to be a church full of power, full of authority to command gates to open up to command gates gates of Kawempe gates of Kampala gates of Uganda we want to be that church that stands in your presence that stands in your presence we want to be that church that ascends your holy hill and stands in your presence and listen to mysteries and listens to mysteries of the kingdom and acquires authority acquires power from your presence to face gates to face gates in the name of Jesus Lord give us a pure heart now begin to pray for the church begin to pray for the church tell the Lord as Kawempe worship center Father give us a pure heart may we call on your name out of a pure heart may we call on your name out of a pure heart may we be that church that stands in your presence always 
present in your presence, oh God. Father, we give you praise. Come on, somebody tell him thank you. Tell him thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for cleansing me. Thank you for washing us as Kawempe. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the blessing of having a pure heart. We will see you as Kawempe Worship Center. We will see you. We will see you. We will see you. We will see your mighty hand. We will see your hand of deliverance. We will see your hand of mighty wonders as Kawempe Worship Center. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blessing of having a pure heart. Thank you, Jesus. We shall see you. In Kawempe, we shall see you in Maganjo. We shall see you. We shall see you. We shall see you in Kampala. We shall see the move of God because we stand in your presence, oh God. Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory. Father, I pray for everyone who is sick. The Bible says he who forgives our sins and heals all our diseases. Father, because you have forgiven us, I pray for everyone who is sick. May you heal our diseases. May you heal our hearts. May you heal our bodies. May you heal our bodies. You promised, oh God, that you forgive all our iniquities and you heal our diseases. Let there be healing in the house by the anointing right now. Let there be healing. Let there be healing. Let there be emotional healing. Let there be healing of the body in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 Amen! Amen! Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! Amen! 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 Clap to Jesus one more time. Can we clap more effectively? Our God who is so merciful. No matter what. He's always there to forgive us. Can we appreciate our pastor? Pastor Colin is a message so powerful. I believe we have understood how to guard our hearts and be pure. It, is, it benefits each individual. Praise God. Amen. Praise be to God. Let's give. Get ready with your ties. Your money for construction and for offering. Let me pray. Can you hold your offering? Whatever you have. Father, we thank you for each and every person who is going to give. Thank you for all the tithes that the, you have enabled them to make money. Thank you for each and every individual that's going to give to your 
house construction. May you protect all the givers. Protect their houses. Protect their jobs. Protect their children. Protect them, oh God. And strengthen them. Give them wisdom to make more money. Give them strength to expand. May you release more capital into their businesses. Good promotions for those who have who are who have office jobs. And we are praying, oh God, that they'll be considered to be paid even in bigger currencies. In different currencies, oh God. We want to invite dollars and pounds and euros into their pockets and bags, oh God. May you give them favor wherever they go. Bless the hands whatever they touch. May it turn into gold and silver and that there will be a blessing to every person around them. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Please walk forward and give with a smile. May God bless you so much. We pray blessing of, to you as you go. In the cities and the villages. Bless all. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in his house forever and ever. Amen. 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 Amen.